Well, the main reason I have this uh, bearing spin is because um, the crank bearings don't have a little groove that should go right here. It actually goes on the outside. And what happens is this bearing is actually designed for only about 40, 50 horses. It's not designed for really high horsepower engines. <clears throat> Which means that because the groove is on the outside, the rod only gets oil like for maybe 30 degrees, 40 degrees. And then it's on its own with that oil. So by actually making the groove right here with this disc that I, that I got, I'm gonna put it on the grinder and uh, just make a little groove all the way around, which means it's gonna have oil pressure all the way around. And when the crank gets through the holes, the, well, the holes on the crank are actually gonna be able to direct the oil to the rod. And this should be the thing of the past. Look at that. This is why my motor died. <clears throat> okay, so here's my here's my wheel. This is what I made. You know, Mexican curious, what can I say? So what I'm gonna do is basically place the bearing right here and then just spin it. And that should, it should end up right in the middle. Right about there. So that's where I want the oil grid to be on the inside. Okay, here it goes. Just like that, look at that. Now we've got oil going all around it. <laughs> Who needs a machine shop? Shit, man. I don't need to spend thousands of dollars on an expensive machine. I've got a Mickey Mouse everything. Because you're watching the motor network. Now because we opened up more oil in, this bearing is probably going to start to start for oil. So what we did is... Uh, we went ahead and drilled these little holes a little bit bigger just to get more oil to go through it. And yet, get everything well oiled. Look it up, look it up. Okay, entonces como vamos a modificar este... We're going to modify these, these tappets. These uh, push rod uh, tappets. We're going to make little grooves you can see right there see those grooves right there in the middle okay that groove is so that it it has oil 100 percent of the time the valves will be oiled otherwise if you don't do that they only have like oh eight percent of the uh time they've got oil the other uh percentage is uh what 92 percent 93% it's gonna be dry so this will keep your your heads a lot cooler but when you run a mod mod modification like this you need to run some uh, extra cooling for your oil because it's gonna get hotter because it's gonna be extracting more heat so you need to run uh, an oil cooler which we've got <laughs> okay these are the new ones we're gonna we made three little lines evenly spaced and that's where we're gonna that's where we're gonna grind okay vamos a empezar let's start
Cow. Now, it's very important that you grab some sandpaper. Of course, you know what the hell I did with it. Anyways, and you sand the burrs off, because otherwise if you don't do that, if you put that in your engine, if you have any burrs, it's gonna destroy the, the little cylinder this goes into. So you wanna sand it with a 400, real quick, real quick. Get those burrs down, deburr it, and that's it, you're done. Okay, I just finished building the crank, all the gearing, the bearing in here, the uh, climbing gear, the timing distributor gear, bearings, spacers, everything. <coughs> These parts right here are press fit, but to get around that, you need to heat the parts really hot, and then they'll sl slide right in. Don't hit the, don't heat up the crank. If you heat up the crank. You'll never get it in. You have to heat up the parts so that they expand and you can slide them in while the crank is cold. And then uh, that's pretty much it. You're done. Plain and simple. Um, I, I already went ahead and grooved all the bearings. The saddle for the mains, they've been grooved. And the uh, main bearing in the for the flywheel is all done. You don't do the groove on this one. No, 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 no. You don't do that. This is only for load for the alternator uh, belt. So you don't do any modifications on this little tiny pairing. That's the sign. Time to put the rods on. Which we've got right here. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, yeah. These are Chevy rods. Actually, they're Buick, but they, it says Chevy on it. But in reality, these are Buick rods. The reason for the, for using these Chevy rods is because the diameter is actually smaller, which allows you to run a bigger crank and not hit all over the engine block. Pretty cool, huh? Now these, look at the way they're, they're grooved. These rods will do up to 8,000 RPMs without snapping. These are good for 8,000 RPMs. Woo! That's way too much for me. I'm just hoping to get about 6,500 RPMs. That's about it. You don't need to go any higher than that. And uh, that's pretty much it, man. I'm gonna install these and uh, put them in the engine. Okay, this is where we're at right now. I went ahead and replaced this guy. Here. This guy into a, for a uh, larger fan. Since we're running a larger engine, we need a wider fan. It's been replaced. Went, and went ahead and hacked this up so I could uh, place an oil sandwich so I can run some oil lines. Right here. There we go. So you can see the sandwich, the thickness of it. And that's why I had to hack it up right here. So I, just, so I could push the, this uh, oil cooler up higher. So this is where my oil lines are going to come out. They're going to go this way and through the firewall and in. And I'm waiting for my new heads. These are the old ones. They're going to be uh, big valve, high flow heads. We went ahead and added a oil sump. That way we can run three quarts more for a total of six quarts. This is a six quart uh, oil or motor. So for that extra cooling. And okay, here's my problem right now. I need to get some shims because you can see the pistons is outside the barrel. And we'll wait until he leaves. Ah, uh, that's my son Carlos leaving for, he's gonna go visit his friends or some shit. Anyways, uh, blah, blah, blah. Piston, anyways, uh, yeah, piston. Bigger, therefore I need to run shims down here to bring the barrel up higher than the piston. Otherwise it'll just smack it to the head and 
Adios, motor. Ugh, yeah. Anyways, as far as uh, rings, I'm gonna run some. Uh, they're called uh, Total Seal. Basically, there's no gaps, so that'll reduce the blow by that this big motor is gonna produce. If you don't run a Total Seal on the big motor, basically what's gonna happen? All the uh, compression is gonna go to your well. A lot of the compression that's going to escape through the little gaps of the rings and go into your engine block, create a lot of air pressure inside, and it's going to blow the oil outside the. Let me see. Let's go around. Let's go around. Let's go around. Blow it right out the seal right here. Now I'm running a sand seal, so it wouldn't do that on mine. What mine would have done would have been it, it would have blown the oil through here and down the and just shoot it up make a mess on the muffler and uh, basically that's why you want to run a total seal I would, I'd recommend you run total seal on any size motor basically it'll last longer you'll burn less oil and uh, that's pretty much it really that's all I've done so far oh yeah I went ahead and run the uh, filtered uh, oil pump according to them you can't run it if you use the uh, filter that comes with this because th that original filter is like way the hell over here and it hits basically let me see there it is let's see if put it on okay basically it would hit let's see right there but because this is a uh, filter from my Kia, my 2003 Kia Rio, 2013 Kia Rio, it uh, it is perfect. It doesn't hit. So I'm going to run with it. I wouldn't want to run with a filter that is somewhere over here bolted to the to the to the frame of the car. That's to me to me that is a crappy way of solving a simple problem. Um, so I would never run with a uh, remote filter. It's just that is crap. I don't even know why they do that. It's like this wasn't too hard to figure out. Seriously. And let's see. Yeah, that's pretty much it.